$2,500. Five grand. You could be getting $12,000, $300,000. You know America is famous for automobile-themed reality shows, race-themed, family-themed, and adventure-themed. But competition-themed reality TV shows are rare, which is why Storage Wars is special. The show aired on A&E, spanning over 13 seasons from December 2010 to January 2019. Storage Wars' 13th and 14th seasons premiered around 2021, and it follows the lives of the cast members as they compete for the auction of storage lockers in California. It is a rule in California, United States, that when rent is not paid on a storage locker for more than three months, the content in such storage can be sold off by an auctioneer. So the storage lockers are what cast members compete to buy, and they are given five minutes to inspect the content from the doorway for transparency. After the auctions, the winners sort through the lockers, contemplating on the prices they will set on the content and even seek the help of an appraisal for rare, unusual items. This will make them fix a perfect price for the item to avoid loss. The show last aired in April 2022, and five months is somewhat long. So let's get to know what is going on with the show's cast members. Let's get into it. Dan and Laura Dotson there are a lot of married couples on the show, but Dan and Laura Dotson fascinated viewers with their words and actions. Don't forget, Laura coined the evergreen catchphrase, don't forget to pay the lady. In 2019, when the last storage locker was auctioned in the previous episode, the Dotson family returned to their initial work. The couple work as full-time employees in a non-televised private auction circuit. Working in a non-televised auction circuit while already famous makes no difference. The couple capitalizes on this, and it works for them perfectly. Dan and Laura also operate American Auctioneers, a for-hire service that handles every aspect of the process of an auction. Similarly, the Dotson family also runs StorageAuctions.net, an online repository for self-storage facility auctions across the United States of America. When off-camera, the couple have their hands tied, so they hardly have time for travel and all. Even though they do, they do seldomly. The Dotson family also had a scary experience with their son, who was shot some years back in a drive-by shooting outside an Airbnb in Arizona. He survived the near-death experience, but had a tough recovery process. Dave Hester You love villain-themed movies, right? Then get familiar with Dave Hester. He is the perfect description of who the audiences love to hate. Dave's villain acts do not in any way hurt his colleagues. He just deemed it fit to be a pain in the ass for every one of them on the show. With so much aggression and hostility, attempted to outfox his co-stars in their bids on storage units. The mogul also generated a catchphrase. Which he would yell out during auctions and plastered on his vehicle and clothing. Dave is that guy you don't want to mess with on the show. Back in December 2012, Dave was fired from the show after just three seasons for unknown reasons which made him sue A&E and the show producers for $750,000, citing wrongful termination. The case was later settled in 2014 after two years of dragging each other's necks. Dave isn't just a villain on the show. After all, he did show the show producers and A&E what it means to be a villain in real life. After the suit was settled, was Dave Hester accepted back to Storage Wars? You guessed right, yup. He was reinstated. In June 2020, Dave was in the news again for another lawsuit. He sued Public Storage for making a bid for the storage locker that was still being for. Dave has already purchased the insides of the abandoned locker for $11,800 only for the company to realize it was a mistake on their part, and the rightful owner of the storage is still actively paying for the rent. This made Dave sue them after Public Storage voided the sale, eventually losing. It seems Dave spends more time in the courtroom than on the screen. Well, off the courtroom, Dave started an auctioneering for hire company and also serves as a consultant in the auction industry. Darrell Sheets If you are very familiar with this show, you will notice everyone has a nickname. And for Darrell, it was The Gambler, a perfect moniker for a gambler who loves to gamble a lot. Darrell would pay a huge amount for storage lockers and often scored big. He gets away with his gambling most times, and one of the greatest scores he has on the show was when he gambled on an item and paid a whopping $3,600 for the contents of the locker. Upon opening the locker, Darrell found an artwork worth $300,000, the biggest score in Storage Wars history as of 2012. Hold on just a minute. $300,000? After his exploits in 2012, Darrell stuck with the show until its 13th season when he decided to have a semi-retirement. Darrell has since then chosen to live a quiet life off the grid of fans. He has since then been focusing on his personal life and health. 
During his days on the show, Darrell lost weight with the aid of Nutrisystem. In an Instagram post, Darrell also revealed that he had suffered a minor heart attack and lung infection in 2019. I've been very sick for three months, and two nights ago I had a mild heart attack. I found out I have congestive heart failure and a severe issue going on with my lungs. Darrell later deleted the post, but trust fans to have records of everything. After his recovery process, Darrell moved to Lake Havasu City, a California-Arizona border resort town, retired, and got engaged to Romney Sidney, who works for a house rescue organization. He and his lover seem to have parted ways, as he is no longer seen with her like usual. Rather, he and Wurfell have sparked a reaction online, as they have been seen together. Brandon Sheets A prodigy of Darrell Sheets, he is one of the few that played numerous roles on the show, starting with Sidebet, a supporting player and a tag-along for his father, Darrell, the gambler. Brandon was part of the show from inception, which made him gather enough experience from his father and other buddies. Brandon, now an independent player, bids on his own and finds himself in a bidding war with his own after Darrell retires from the show. However, Brandon, who started the show with the likes of his father and other top bidders, left the show before his father retired, not of his own volition, however. Brandon, who addressed his fans from his former Twitter account, said he was no longer affiliated with Storage Wars, explaining that while his father would remain on the series, his involvement had been terminated because of budgetary issues. Months later, he fired back at Storage Wars Network a and &E for attempting to continue a professional relationship, tweeting, Funny how at a and &E fired me for a lack of budget, but they still have their people follow me on social media and want me to do free stuff. After his spell on the show, Brandon has since moved on with his life but still somehow does something related to buying real estate. Brandon moved to Arizona, where he works as a real estate agent and a driver for UPS. Barry Weiss The Collector, as he was fondly called by his colleagues and loved ones. Barry earned his nickname due to his experience and prowess in the bidding show. Barry's tendency to bring home large auction halls from bidding wars is non-negotiable. Barry wrote on his fame on the show judiciously as he left after the season to start his own spin-off series. In 2014, Weiss starred in Buried Treasure, traveling around the United States in search of rare finds, American Pickers style. It lasted just eight episodes, while Storage Wars, Barry Strikes Back, a 2015 compilation show in which Weiss and former co-star Kenny Crossley presented unseen footage from Storage Wars, made it to 10 episodes. In 2019, Barry was involved in a motorbike accident, and according to reliable sources, he was struck by a car mid-ride and spent two months in a hospital. After his recuperation period, Barry landed a global brand ambassador gig. Brandy Passante and Jared Schultz The opposite couple? Oh, they never tied the knots. Brandy and Jared paraded themselves as life partners on the show, but for real, they didn't tie the knot. They just dated. In 2020, both parties confirmed that they had parted ways in 2018, but decided not to announce it until 2020. While Jared has moved on, as he is now seen dating another lady that works for him at his restaurant, Brandy seems to be taking her time as she waits for the perfect time. Their kids are in the care of Brandy, who is now overseeing the welfare of their kids and her career. In 2020, Brandy announced that she contracted COVID-19 and lost her sense of taste, while in 2021, Jared was arrested and charged with domestic violence against Brandy. It was fun while it lasted. Brandy and Jared were that perfect couple everyone admired before it was revealed they were not married. However, since Jared has since moved on, Brandy should do so as well. She does better while bidding with a man by her side than her female friends. Don't you all agree?